So I think we are live. Welcome to our webinar, everybody. So this is our last webinar team, and we're going to talk about the trends, the technology trends of 2020. My name is Baran, and I'm the marketing manager here at Sestec. I have with me our CEO, Professor Levan Taslan. Welcome, sir. Hi. How are you, everybody? Mm -hmm. And we have our uh, permanent speaker, Anil. We Hi, Welcome, yeah. Anil. Thank you. It's good to be back, Baran. Yeah, this is, I think, our seventh uh, webinar. We did seven of these. I hope you guys are enjoying it also. Uh, and we're going to continue to do, to do this in 2020. So today we're going to talk about the trends, yes? So these are the technology trends. Uh, for the ones that don't know Sestec, we are a uh, conversational AI and analytics company. We work on solutions, uh, speech solutions powered by AI. So in on everyday business, we work with AI. So this is our top five that we think we're going to change the way companies are doing business uh, in the upcoming years because everybody has a list because it's, it's the end of the year everybody has a, a favorite list of trending technologies this is our top five so uh, and if you have any questions we're going to start uh, we have an, uh, 30 minutes to discuss these issues uh, if you have any questions you can chat us type is here and we're gonna do our best to address all of the questions so let me start by sharing my screen. So, so I introduce my speakers now. This is the topics, today's agenda. These are the five technology trends that we're gonna talk about. First, we're going to talk about automation. How automation is going to change jobs that everybody's talking about? Is it going to end jobs? Is it going to make more jobs available? Uh, we're going to talk the effects of automation. Then we're going to talk about democratization of technology, how it's going to end the monopoly of IT departments in companies as of today. Then we're going to talk about conversational technologies. This is our expertise. Yes or no? So we're going to uh, dive deep into that. The human augmentation, how machines can help humans and vice versa, how, how humans can help AI also. The chat bus, the virtual assistants, we're going to talk about details. And lastly, AI strategy, how you can build an AI strategy into your organizations. What are the, you know, uh, the helping points, that vital points that we observe from our clients? We're going to share that with you guys. So without wasting any more time, let's dive in. The rise of automation, yes. So everybody is talking about everything that can be automated will be automated, yeah? And we're not talking about the rest. This is like a very general concept. So let's dive in deep into that concept now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have our first graph. Okay, we got a lot of graphs here, but this is very, very basic, yeah. uh, easy graphs. So the techno what does technology does in the last 150 years? It decreases hard, dangerous, and repetitive jobs. Yes, I know. And it boosted knowledge-based intensive jobs. Yeah, exactly. So, actually, what we are seeing here is that the white color jobs are actually increasing with the help of technology, while these, you know, maybe outdated jobs are decreasing, you know, like agriculture and uh, the industry. But the services part is really on an upward trend, you know, and we are seeing more and more industries being affected by these technological advancements and automations. And our company is helping with this automation as well uh, by being a more, you know, data driven and more, uh, you know, a product uh, offering products for the automation businesses. So in the next slide, uh, Baran, we are going to see some of the trending, uh, yeah, the more popular uh, businesses. Maybe Levant can pitch in here. Mm -hmm. um, basically here in the future, uh, there are going to be some areas which are going to be more popular, especially in terms of uh, jobs. Uh, for example, software definitely is number one here. That's going to be more popular, even more popular. Uh, sociology is going to basically investigate uh, how humans uh, are going to be affected uh, through the AI uh, interference uh, in the society. 
um, also content writers like blog writers and uh, things like that uh, that require creativity uh, more uh, those sort of jobs are going to be uh, popular uh, like art again uh, marketing also requires creativity uh, thank you <laughs> like yes uh, baran here is the messages for you yes uh, yes, you are safe <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have also economics uh, there, there are going to be very uh, large impacts uh, on the economics uh, that we see nowadays uh, after the intervention of ai uh, into the uh, arena it's going to be very difficult to foresee uh, what's going to come next and uh, economics uh, is going to be important uh, and psychology of course we see uh, also our children and everybody is affected very much with uh, technology and uh, social media and also ai technologies and how we can cope with all these things uh, and also robot mechanics is going to be an interesting area because uh, robots are going to need attention uh, mechanically uh, they are going to need repairs and stuff like that so it's going to be a popular job for humans to uh, repair uh, robots uh, and uh, data entry here data entry we mean by data entry uh, the data to feed to the ai systems to train ai systems for example uh, for speech recognition if we give an example uh, you need to retype humans uh, retype the things that the system misunderstands and based on those uh, transcriptions uh, correct transcriptions the system is retrained and it gets better and better or like for image recognition if there's an apple in an image uh, a human has to basically annotate it and based on that the system gets better and better in recognizing apples for example so right now we cannot really rely on the computers themselves but we need to have this kind of human input to actually train those machines. So the, the jobs, therefore, is going to increase in the data entry market as well. Mm -hmm. That's the yes, critical. Exactly. OK. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So in the next slide, we see the, 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 the price of you know, uh, maintaining a robot and price of labor. You know, the, 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 the price of the human brain is actually very expensive. So this is the uh, trend. Uh, you might say the cost of labor versus the cost of uh, robots so and it's going to continue de decreasing so definitely there we're going to see more of uh, robots ai in the organizations just because of the financial effect yeah, yeah actually this is true for the most of the world like in very small parts of the world the labor might be cheaper than the robots but this graphic i think uh, is going to hold true for the you know for the most or the major parts of the world and uh, as the robot prices are decreasing drastically and the labor costs actually increasing even more drastically we are going to uh, see the robots taking over some of the repetitive jobs that the real humans are doing so this is the trend for uh, 2015 and 2025 yeah okay let's go on. so let's talk about a real world example where ai actually uh, made it more efficient the organization yeah. itself can you talk uh, sure. about this sure so this is the turkey's first private bank if uh, you know uh, anybody in the uh, audience doesn't know it's yapu credi and they came to us asking about an ai solution so uh, they told us that they are receiving around 30000 notifications these are live interactions either from you know in a written form or you know the the, the customers of yapu credi they were calling the bank and on average, the banking industry is getting around 20,000 notifications each month. So now the job uh, of the employees of the bank is actually to uh, go through them, understand them, digest them, and also categorize them. And then they're going to take action uh, on them. So we were being very uh, conservative when we said uh, they're going to spend an average of one minute. You know, we were thinking some smaller uh, complaints as well. But even with that conservative, 
uh, uh, prediction, they're, they need to spend 500 hours. And that's what they were doing before actually they came to us. Now we deployed an AI solution, which works on-prem and it can categorize these uh, notifications uh, automatically actually and it does it under one second so uh, it produces over 90 percent accuracy and in the later slides we are going to talk about okay what happens for the remaining part you know where there's some kind of uh, missed interpretation by the ai but even with this percentage this is impressive and it's making lives easier for the employees in the in the yep, credit bank yeah the call center agents now, instead of spending 500 hours doing categorization of these notifications, now they can spend on the actual customer to make, make them happier. So uh, this is a direct effect on the customer experience side. So I think this is all we have for the automation, but we're gonna, of course, these are all connected issues. So let's jump into the democratization of technology. So what does that mean actually? We, we see a lot of you know, articles and uh, research talking about these. So it is actually uh, the, the, the monopoly of the IT departments. Yes, in the company, now IT has to answer to all of the business units currently, but uh, this is, uh, is about to change. So even the well, most well-intentioned IT departments just cannot uh, answer to all of the questions of the business units within our organization. So this is now evolving into what? Citizen data scientists, yeah? Arnold, you want to talk about sure. this? Or? Uh, actually, Levent and I can actually uh, kind of dive into this, but mm -hmm. we need more and more uh, non-technical people within the organizations to handle actually technical problems, and uh, we need to provide them the tools to do this, you know, uh, and that's what the democratization of technology mean. And we have been seeing this trend in the industry, but more importantly, in the real customers, in real life. So maybe... Uh, Levant can take over from here, but uh, in mm -hmm. the next slides, I think, yeah, we, we are going to show you some real example. But first, this is the tools that I was talking about, low code and no code. Please mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, actually, low code, no code uh, applications are uh, going to be, become very popular. Uh, they are already becoming popular. Uh, there are many uh, platforms that can uh, be used for uh, developing low, low code applications. Uh, that means actually you don't need uh, developer knowledge to uh, solve some of the uh, process problems within a company. Uh, for example, there is a certain process and you need automation for that. And uh, usually you need IT resources or development resources uh, to accomplish that project. But uh, with low code application platforms, uh, you can do this with a drag and drop uh, functionality uh, to uh, automate uh, a process and uh, generate a uh, small project uh, without uh, any interference from the uh, IT or uh, software de uh, development uh, departments. Um, for example, Microsoft Power Apps is an ap application platform like that, and there are many others uh, like this uh, which are becoming popular. Uh, also, I mean, uh, not only these platforms are important, uh, the philosophy of uh, low code uh, development is important. Uh, if your application, if your software product is capable of uh, enabling uh, people with only business knowledge uh, to the system or process uh, for their needs, then uh, Basically, you don't need any IT uh, help, and therefore you can do things much faster, and you can uh, do digitalization process in your company uh, much faster. And here are some numbers. For example, low code by 2024, low code application development will be responsible for more than 65% of application development. Uh, there's a prediction like that. And by 2022, at least 40% of new application development projects will have some sort of artificial intelligence uh, co-developers on the team. So some of the 
uh, development is gonna be outsourced to artificial intelligence instead of developers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's give a a concrete example about this about our uh, one of our projects actually. Anil, you wanna talk about this project? Okay. Sure. So uh, this is the virtual assistant that uh, was launched actually last month. So it's very new, but the perception that we get from the market is highly uh, considerate and it's very positive. So Sestec helped Vakıf Bank, the Turkey's fourth largest bank, uh, launch their new mobile assistant. It's called VB. So uh, it can answer more than 5,000 questions. And uh, the whole thing took around eight months from the kickoff meeting until it was live. It can do uh, around 300 transactions. Now, all of this was done on-prem with the bank. And um, the product is working and it's helping its customers, work of bank customers to do daily day, uh, you know, transactions on their banking platform. But in the next slide, I'm gonna show you something more impressive about it. Now. When the product went live, of course, you know, we were doing some uh, work before it went live, but after it went live, uh, they realized, Vakıf Bank realized that uh, their customers are asking, how should I invest my money? So this question was being asked frequently and there were no answer by VB. What they did is from the training that they get from us and without any coding experience, they were able to incorporate this into their uh, flow. They used uh, the Sestex Dialog Design Studio and now the VB uh, assistant can answer even this question. And uh, Sestex didn't have to do anything uh, except that you know we gave them the good training that they went through and uh, looks like now it's uh, handling more and more business. So this is what we were meaning by democratization of technology and uh, the citizens uh, within the uh, company who can actually influence the technology. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about nine IT personnel getting involved, business people getting involved in the uh, decision flow of the chatbot and making it smarter without the help of the original technology yeah. developer Sestec. Yeah. So this is saving time and increasing the customer experience drastically. Uh, so this is what everybody's talking about, being agile. Uh, this is a good example. So, okay, let's jump into our next. So this is our uh, favorite subject, one of our favorite subjects, conversational technologies, because we have been working on this for like maybe 20 years now. Exactly. Yeah, no? So let's uh, give some hints of, our 20 years of experience, what did we learn from our customers? What are the important things yeah. uh, about conversational technology? So the first technology. lesson is do not so. do the mistakes that you did in 2019. So in 2020, you know, just yeah. uh, <laughs> I had the webinar a few months back where we actually discussed extensively the, the mistakes that you may be doing when you develop a conversational technology, right? And uh, we need to address the fact that these devices are going to know you better than your family, better than your friends in, in a couple of years. So, yeah, this is a great assumption, actually. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know if I prefer this, the machine knowing more actually, about me than comes my from, family. Uh, but uh, because people are more and more interacting with these smart machines, maybe even more than their relatives, you know, these machines, and they are employing a lot of uh, AI in the background, and it's going to actually learn your emotional state and learn what you might be doing next, what you might be asking for next. So yeah. uh, I think That's this correct. might become true. Uh, but while you are actually uh, developing this kind of technology, okay, there are always pain points. So the users, actual users, reported that the tool that they are interacting with, 22% of said, it's stupid. It's not intelligent enough, okay? So they, mm -hmm. they stopped using the tool. So this is a very uh, big number. So And it can be addressed fairly quickly because you can make your bot look like uh, it is smart enough to handle the everyday questions. The second one is they get stuck and they don't know what to do next. Okay, this is one of the problems where the customers are frustrated because you know at some point the, the intelligent assistant is stuck at a menu or at a level where it cannot go back so that you have to either restart your application or totally quit. So that's 32% accounts for. The biggest one, the biggest pain point here is the almost 60% is that, you know, at some point when you're uh, transferred to a live agent, you have to retell your story, which is 
extremely mm -hmm. frustrating and also from a business point of view so if we have any uh, audience here you know from a uh, from our customers you know it's gonna create a huge cost because now the agent is gonna spend more time to understand the problem instead of just the bot transferring that knowledge to an agent so you gotta be careful uh, creating these kind of uh, conversational technologies okay so let's move on to the next one all right as i said having an informational bot handling day to day uh, day to day questions is easy and it doesn't actually require a lot of uh, complexity and the customer experience even then you know it only uh, accounted for 22% of the pain but still you know your bot has to have this basic understanding of questions now when you go to the second level the personalized bots are using your demographic data like how old are you your gender you know the background that you're coming from so that it can handle uh, in a more personalized way so we can do it in sestec with our personas that we define to our conversational technologies so the bot is getting now complicated more complicated because the interaction is getting exactly. complicated yeah? and at the end the customer experience is increasing because it's becoming more and more complex and it can address in a personal way and then the final piece is the transactional boss like vb you know which can do 300 transactions you just don't want to ask questions and get answers you want to do something with these intelligent uh, assistants and then your customer experience is really booming when you do this kind of uh, conversational technology. So, do you want to wrap up? If you want to wrap up, making a chatbot smarter. What are the pain points that we definitely sure, have to address? Sure, there are four main points here. The first one is know your audience, know their journey. Okay, so uh, where are they coming from? Uh, what did they do before actually they come to you as a virtual assistant? Did they visit your website? Did they actually call and ask about your products? It's their journey and you got to respect that and you don't need to ask everything, uh, you know, from scratch. The second one is capture intent early and carefully. There is a great example where someone is asking about a credit line. OK, and uh, the bot is interpreting as as apply to credit or maybe it can say, OK, this is a credit card application, although it's not, you know. So this intent capturing early and carefully is going to, you know, uh, solve a lot of problems down the line because uh, the first thing you do is capturing that intent. And if you do it right, then, uh, you know, your bot uh, will seem actually much smarter. The third one is user centric dialogue flow. So. Uh, you may be saying how you're doing or you can say uh you know use some kind of uh, slang terms when you're interacting with these uh, smart assistants and this uh dialogue flow should actually use you as a user uh to create its logic you know so uh, not everyone can actually adhere to the rules of you know every, uh, the conversations that we do in a formal way so your bot should be uh, supporting this and then the fourth one is don't force but respect to the customer I mean, there are many ways that the customers can again you know uh, interact with the bot you cannot just force them to interact in a single way mm -hmm. so this is uh, probably the most important one you know that uh, you can think of and uh, again the previous webinar talked extensively about this so you can find the link on our website and uh, kind of go through it yeah for the ones who are interested please go to our website uh, and we you can have the recorded versions of our webinars one webinar is uh, definitely talking in details of uh, designing a chatbot so let's start to our uh, next topic is the human augmentation uh, of course we're not going to dive deep into that hollywood scenarios where you know smart drugs make you uh, you know achieve incredible things but let me give, give you a, a, just a one minute introduction what are these augmentations uh, th these are divided into two actually the physical one is where there's implementing or there's a hosting technology within your body so you can uh, enhance your uh, hearing or vision or perception by a device uh, or you can um, you know increase your biological uh, capabilities uh, with a device you can lift like uh, 100 kilos with the help of a uh, mechanics device yes robocop kind of again hollywood mm -hmm. uh, scenarios uh, you can uh, do some augmentation to the brain uh, from outside which is uh, Elon uh, musk is uh, talking about uh, in details in the last couple of years where you enhance the performance of the brain 
with uh, outside intervention, or you can play with the uh, genetic uh, design of the human body. And the second uh, uh, section is the cognitive augmentation, where our ability to make better decisions, to increase our performance, what can we do? We can get help from AI, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes now, augmentation, uh, augmented intelligence, where AI can help humans, or vice versa. I've got a surprise slide for you, Anil, uh, where humans can help AI. Uh, neuroscience and smart drugs, again, we're not going to uh, dive deep into that. But what is augmented intelligence? We are hearing this a lot in the recent uh, periods. So it is basically it's a human-centered, don't forget this word, human-centered, where people and AI work together to increase the performance of the organization, the process, the company. Yeah. So it's not uh, nothing more complicated than that. It's, it's very simple. Uh, and how do we do that? Uh, you want to jump in here on the, the end goal is the customer experience. Yeah. Why are we doing all of that? Why are we getting help from AI? Mm -hmm. It's just to enhance. I think this the slide and the next one is going to talk about it. But, you know, uh, uh, we can use AI for the short term just to automate some of the basic tasks. I, I think since the beginning, we have been mentioning automation of basic tasks. Uh, but in the midterm and long term, the application areas are going to get, you know, uh, complicated and it's going to result with better customer experience. But you got to be careful here again. You know, uh, your mistakes can result with not so good customer experience. So in midterm, the real time assistance is going to uh, uh, be happening on the daily task because you're going to be interacting with your uh, assistance, you know, virtual assistance. But the final piece in the long term is guidance to improve process. At that point, maybe the AI is just going to not help you, but actually it's going to say, okay, you're doing a process wrong. And uh, if you go in this way, it's not going to end good for you. So it's ask, it's going to ask you or maybe recommend you to improve the process. Okay. So it's going to tell you how to do it. So that's the goal and goal of this augmented uh, AI yeah. within the, within the human uh, centric, uh, you know, interactions. Yeah. So like we said, AI plus human touch is the actually the perfect uh, customer experience on that. Actually, I've got a, a slide for you. Maybe you're going to jump in here. You did this before. The seamless agent, remember where AI and human agents, call center agents work together. Sure. Just uh, okay, you sure. go so what we have quickly? is, uh, you know, within our conversational AI platform, you know, the bot can handle most of the questions. But in some cases, it can struggle because there are ambiguous answers and it may not know which one to answer. At that point, it can transfer the session in the background to a live agent. And the live agent can either listen to the request coming from the end user or they can see it, you know, in the written format. And then they can intervene the decision and actually guide the bot to the right one. So this is important for two reasons. The first one is the short term. Uh, the actual customer who made the original request is going to get the right answer. So that's customer experience right there. But uh, the more important reason uh, outcome is that you can use this and train your bot to answer this question correctly in the future. So that's going to help actually not only one person, but maybe hundreds more who is going to be asking same or similar questions. So employ AI, but then help and uh, put your human touch on top of it. That's going to result with the best experience, user experience. So uh, it's a, it's a two-way street, yeah? AI can help humans and that's also right. humans can help AI to, uh, you know, for the better, better customer experience. So let's uh, actually we can jump topic because this is uh, highly anticipated. Uh, our CEO this in our presentations and the meetings, and it gets uh, the, the traction. So we want to spend a couple of minutes uh, here. So Levant, if you want to take over. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, come. Uh, the company is investing in AI. Uh, they report a 15% increase in operational efficiency. So AI really uh, helps companies uh, to be more efficient. And we see uh, these sort of numbers in our implementations uh, with customers as well. Um, and also Gartner asked uh, basically uh, companies, uh, top emerging 
uh, which top emerging technologies are going to impact your customer experience? Uh, they asked this question uh, to uh, many companies. And the answers they get, uh, the statistics show that the AI is going to have the largest impact. They think that AI is going to have the largest impact uh, on their uh, projects, uh, improvement projects, digitalization projects. Mm -hmm. So how? Yeah. So the the question is how? Yeah. yeah. How we're going to do that? This is very important. I just want to intervene here. Yes. So uh -huh. you want to summarize? So how do we implement yes, and, AI into uh, our organization? Implementing AI into your organization is a long journey, and first you need to uh, set a final target. But uh, you have to have some milestones. Uh, you have to put it into phases, uh, and you sh you need to ensure ownership throughout the company people has to believe in that project at the same time. Uh, you need to also get help from out, uh, outside, uh, from experienced uh, people. Like Sestek. Like Sestek <laughs> in this case. Um, yeah, yeah. Because and, it's hard. Uh, technology uh, is not enough. The design should also be intelligent. So uh, the business uh, departments, basically, they have to take part in this process. Uh, and machine learning works with uh, data and focus on your data. Uh, not only data is important, but you need to know your data and you need to know how you're going to manipulate it. Clean data. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, and uh, let's talk together on this. This is our last slide, everybody. And here, so this is about the myths about AI. Everybody's talking about these myths. Yeah. Yes, there Where's are the some myths about AI. Uh, people say that uh, let's buy a chatbot and we are done with AI and all of our problems are, are going to be solved. Uh, but this is not the truth. The reality is uh, you have to decide on a strategy with AI-powered solutions. And you can take only the first step with chatbot. Uh, and the initial version of the chatbot is not going to satisfy yeah. all your needs. Uh, you need to know that. Uh, another myth is AI can decide for us what to do, when to do, and how to do it. It's so smart that it can do everything. Uh, that's not the case, actually. AI is just a tool that can memorize things very well and that can yeah, uh, learn yeah. from what you train it with. Uh, so it decision makers can decide on a strategy and they can only get help from an AI uh, on how to execute it. And another myth is AI can think, apply logic and learn on its own. And uh, as of 2019, AI cannot think, apply logic or uh, build empathy or learn on its own. That's not true. Uh, Another myth is AI will either save us or end us. Uh, it's not <laughs> a binary thing like that. I mean, uh, when considering AI, you need to avoid extreme scenarios. Uh, even nowadays, uh, the world can end with nuclear weapons. I mean, uh, AI is not going to be the only responsible for the yeah, end without, of uh, without civilization. AI, yeah. uh, it's, <laughs> of course, again, it's uh, it's up to humans what they are going to do with AI. I mean, uh, before another myth is before it's too late, yeah. we should dedicate all of our human and financial resources to AI. Uh, you don't need to panic. I mean, when investing in fast growing technologies, consider planning with phases, and uh, you need to have a controlled budget for that. Uh, so that's the right approach here. Yeah. Yeah, our VP of sales did this uh, presentation. It says, hurry slowly. You have to hurry, but you have to, you know, phase and plan and execute with, the, uh, uh, you know, phases and don't go all in. So I think this is our final slide here. Everybody, thank you oh. for joining us. If you have any questions. No, actually, just we have like any we, we have one right comment now, here. Or... That's it. Thank you, Sestek, kind of comment, you know, uh, but that's it. No questions. If they have any questions, uh, okay. you know, you're always welcome to reach us on our website. But thank you, Barak, for hosting this webinar. And yes, thank you, Levant.
Yes, thank you, Levant and Anil, for joining me. If you have any further questions, just email us at info at sestech.com or marketing at sestech.com. And for the recording of this webinar, you can always visit our website. Uh, we have the recorded session there. Yeah, so see you, see you next time in 2020, everybody. Bye.